Hey everyone and welcome back. I'm Jess from Jessica Donnie and Co. And in today's video, I want to show you how you can use PayPal with ClickFunnels. Um, we run a digital marketing agency for online service providers. So collecting payments is really important to most of our clients. Um, when we originally build out their funnels, we mainly use Stripe for payment processing just because our funnels that we build for our clients include um, order bumps, one-time offers, upsells, downsells, that kind of stuff. And there is a limitation to using PayPal with ClickFunnels and it is the fact that they will not support your one-click upsells. So when you're saying, hey, do you want to um, you know, buy my $27 product and they go and they buy the $27 product, you can take them back to an upsell page, but you basically have to say, hey, now that you bought my $27 product, why don't you go back to PayPal and also go back and enter your payment information a second time to go and buy my $97 product. And that's obviously not very smooth. So we generally don't set our clients up with a PayPal integration just because it really hampers the function of the funnel and some people are just gonna get annoyed. Like I would be like, I'm not gonna go through that damn checkout process a second time right now, so I'm off. So we don't usually use it. However, there are times where, for example, you might sell spaces on your high-end mastermind and it would be easier for you if you could sell those with PayPal for whatever reason. So I want to show you in this video how you would go and set that up. So the first thing that you need is your sales funnel. You don't need to bother with um, an order form. So if you create a sales funnel and it has an order form page, you do not need that one because we can't actually use that with PayPal. So all you need is a sales page and on the sales page, you're going to want to have a button somewhere where you can take people through to PayPal to process the checkout. And then you want to have an order confirmation page that you bring people back to after they've completed your checkout. So what we're gonna do is, um, you're going to go and sign into my PayPal um, and go into uh, my selling preferences. You're going to go to PayPal buttons and you're gonna update your PayPal buttons. That's gonna take you through to this screen. On that screen, you want to press create new button and that's going to take you into um, the section where you create your PayPal payment button. What's important is that you either use a buy now button if it's a one-time payment or you use the subscription button if it is um, multiple payments, but don't use the shopping cart button. That one doesn't work properly. So I'm just gonna create a product with a one-time payment. I'm going to name it video sample because that's what we're doing. And what's important is that you give the, um, the product that you're selling an item ID because we're gonna have to put that back into ClickFunnels in a second. So let's say this is one, two, three. It's gonna cost one pound to go and buy that. And we're gonna use the secure merchant account. I don't want people to be able to like, I don't need to track inventory or anything like that. So this section's irrelevant to me. I'm going to move on to step three. I don't want to let customers change order quantities. I don't want them to add any special instructions. I don't need their postal address, but I do want to fill out these two boxes. So when somebody cancels their checkout, um, I'm going to just send them back to the sales page. You could create a second page that if they do cancel their checkout, you try and save the sale. So you kind of say, hey, um, I've noticed that, um, you know, you were just about to buy this. What happened? Did you get distracted? Like you could try and make them an offer on that page so that you don't lose the sale. Um, when you copy and paste, by the way, these URLs out of ClickFunnels, it's actually always better if you open it and then copy it from here because when you copy it out of this space, it always adds a massive um, space, empty character at the end and you often don't see it. So it's you're safer to copy out of the open page. So then we have to decide where do we want to take customers when they finish their checkout so they have paid us. In that case, we want to send them to the order confirmation page where it says, thank you for buying my stuff. I nearly said something else. Hey, I didn't want to preview that. <laughs> I wanted to select the template. It doesn't matter what it looks like for this video anyway. So we're just doing it, you know, just to show you how this works. So we're just going to, uh huh, I haven't changed the URL on that page. Okay, so we're just gonna send them to that page. So, and I'm pretty sure I changed the URL to be this. So that's a case of the URLs aren't the same. Yeah, come on. Okay, 
So now that's the same. Okay, so I want to send them to the order confirmation video sample page. And then we want to actually tick this, um, tick this box. Okay, so now what do we do? I'm just gonna press create button. I just wanna save this. Ah, we can't save it without actually putting that in. So I'm gonna save it without that. Okay, so here we now get given the code for our PayPal button and this is the code that you want to use um, to link this through to your actual sales page. So we're going to do that in one minute. I'm just going to go and reload my buttons and open this button again because <clears throat> we've got to add something to this. I'm just going to say edit button. Okay. So what we want to do now is we want to go into ClickFunnels and we want to go into the settings for the sales page. Oh. And when you scroll down, you can basically um, activate the purchase tracking for third party processes. So um, that's basically where you connect up your PayPal account. So if you say add product, we got to fill out the settings. So our product is called video sample. The billing integration is PayPal. The amount they're being billed is one and minus set pounds. So I'm just going to change this to be the great British pound. Um, I'm going to leave this the same. This isn't an order bump. And then the cart product, we have to provide the product ID for this product. So if you remember, we just set up our product ID up here to be one, two, three. So we want to go and take that and put this into ClickFunnels. And then what we need to do is we need to copy this webhook URL and we need to go and copy that into PayPal down here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is you're going to copy in the URL and then you're going to copy in this bit over here that says notify underscore URL equals and you're going to put that in front of what you just copied over from here okay and then you press save changes now what i normally do is i like to i have to say the paypal buttons are rather ugly so i prefer to use the click funnels buttons so i'm going to copy this url from here oh, i'm going to say create product don't forget to do that oh and by the way here's something i can share with you if you want to edit the other settings, like the fulfillment email, the email integration, or anything like that, so if you want people to get added to your email service provider, then you know, you've got to make sure you set up your email integration and whatnot. The thing is, I find ClickFunnels sometimes doesn't save stuff, so do the fulfillment email and then press update product, then open this again and then do the email integration and then press update product. If you go from the settings to the fulfillment email and then to email integration and then press update product, it will not save anything. So that's just a little hint. Um, okay, so now that that's done, I need to go back to my opt-in page and I'm going to edit this and I'm going to put that PayPal button URL in here. So edit action, set action, go to website URL. And I'm gonna go back and see if that, obviously I'm gonna get the SEO warning. And then if we preview this page, they can press this button and they should get taken through to PayPal so they can go and pay, okay? So that's basically how it works. If you want to add any upsells to your funnel, you have to repeat this process again. So you have to go and set up another button for your upsell. You have to create your upsell page and you have to set this up again and people have to go to the checkout multiple times. So if you are looking to create um, a proper funnel that has order bumps and upsells, um, I would recommend that you use Stripe or anything else for payment processing. If you're selling a one-off product, like a high-end mastermind, and there is no upsells and you don't really need all of this fancy stuff, then do use PayPal um, if you prefer it. That's no problem and you know now how to set that up. It's just 
yeah, the OTOs won't work. So, um, well, they will work, but it's just not a particularly smooth process. And I'm into smooth processes. So um, it's not really my thing to use PayPal for a complicated funnel. Okay, next, that's it from me. Let me know if you have any other questions that come to your mind. Um, if you're still a ClickFunnels beginner, then I'm going to link up my um, ClickFunnels training in the description. And if you are new to ClickFunnels and you're migrating from somewhere else and running a free offer at the moment um, where we are migrating anyone from the existing provider to ClickFunnels for free if they sign up for ClickFunnels with my affiliate link. So um, that offer is still running for a little while. We'll see how we go. Um, I've got some other videos and other topics coming up, mainly kind of sales pages, um, strategy on sales funnels. Um, I'm planning some things on many chat um, to use messenger bots, um, automated webinars. So if you are interested in this kind of stuff, press subscribe and you're going to get notified when the next video is coming out and I'll see you all for the next one.